Now this is going to be a pretty quick intro because there is no history on this pattern. I just came up with it earlier today. I'm hoping to get out on my belly boat or kayak sometime before the end of this summer. So I've been sitting down trying to fill up my warm water boxes, tying up some flies for bass and panfish. Now this one is most definitely a bass pattern. If you saw the thumbnail, you saw that it is a pretty big meaty looking streamer. And in some bright colors, prominently red, which is a pretty traditional color for a lot of bass lures. Now one thing I'm doing differently with this one over say a standard bucktail is I'm using Icelandic sheep wool, dyed red and yellow. Now if you've never used this stuff, check it out. It's some really pretty cool material. Now the hairs are really long. Some of them are maybe six inches long, which is probably why it's pretty popular with saltwater tires. But I'm sure some of you creative tires out there could make some cool bass or steelhead patterns with this. Maybe even some trout streamers if you tie them a little bit on the big side. But it is a fun material. I certainly had fun playing around with this one. And I hope watching this video will encourage some of y'all to experiment, sit down, play around, just have fun. So there it is in the vise, what I have decided as of about five minutes ago to call the Icelandic fin. Just kind of a nod to the Mickey fin with these red and yellow colors. Just a silly little pattern I'm tying up to chase some warm water bass here in Maryland. Now this is a 3X long, 1X strong barbless streamer hook. And I'm going to step my thread up to a 140 denier. This is black. Let's catch it in, oh, somewhere in the middle and take it all the way to the back. Now I'm not gonna put a tail on it, but I am gonna rib it with some silver tinsel. And this is a holographic. You don't need to go with a holographic, but I think it's kind of cool. This is a, a medium size right here. So let's just catch it in right back here toward the, the back where we wanna start wrapping this body. I think that's gonna work right there. Back it off a little bit. And I'm gonna take some small chenille. I think with a size six, we could get away with a, a medium, but I think small is gonna look just a little bit better. Keep the build from building up too much bulk on our body here. So I stripped a little bit of that off so I can just catch in the bare thread. And we'll take this up, I'll leave it a good bit behind the eye because we've got a little bit going on up forward. Now just wrap this chenille up, touch and turns all the way up to our thread. Now I'm gonna counter wrap this rib, not really for strength, but just to keep it from going down in the grooves that would have been naturally left by wrapping that chenille. If you wrap this the same way you did the chenille, you might have some of these that just fall in those grooves. So counter wrapping it can help a little bit. Now the fun stuff, Icelandic sheep wool. And this, I'm gonna use some dyed and red and yellow. Now you can tell here, that might look like how much we wanna do, but look how long that is. That is some really long stuff. So I'm just gonna grab a tuft the size I want and then just try to pull out some of the really long ones by hand. This is certainly not a stackable fur. It is very, very soft and pliable. So. I'm gonna catch it in a good bit longer than the hook. You don't wanna go really long because you might induce a lot of short strikes, but this is probably one and a half times a, a body length right here. So let's catch in, oh, with several wraps right here. Snip this excess. Now get a same size tuft of yellow. And again, this is really long stuff right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing and just kinda of pull the really long ones out until I get, oh, a tuft that I wanna use and maybe just a little bit longer than that red or the same size. So I think that's gonna work right there. Spin my thread clockwise just a little bit to get a, a tighter cord on it. And then a few tight wraps right here. Take a look at it, is that how much we want? I think it is, this is a little bit more than the one we had in the vise at the beginning, which is kind of what I'm going for. Now I'm gonna spend a few wraps right here just to try to smooth this area out, get a, a little bit of a ramp 
It'll make it easier to wrap a front hackle. Now, I'm sure you could just put a head on this and call this a, a fishable fly right now, and it would be pretty sleek. It's still gonna sink pretty well, but I want something for bass fishing that's gonna move a little bit of water when I strip it through. So I'm gonna put a collar hackle on it, and I'm just gonna use some red, cheap, strong saddle hackle, not a high quality feather at all. And I'm gonna catch it in from the long side so that I can get some really long barbs coming down right here when we sweep them back. You know, they might be all the way back there to the, the hook point, but I think that's gonna look good. It's kinda of what I'm going for here. So I'm gonna leave that stem in for a little bit just so I can ramp it down right there. It won't cause a big step. And now I'm just gonna wrap this, really almost as many as I can get, five or six if I can. Just try to wrap the feather and not the sheep's wool right here. So after several wraps, just try to preen them back. We'll preen them back when we build our head here in just a second anyway. And I know that's a big buggy mess, but before I snip that excess off, I'm gonna pull everything back and now build my big old streamer head. Okay, I think that's big enough. Let's go ahead and whip finish it. Now let's take care of this little tip right here and see if we have any cleanup. You know, I'm fine with this. It's a little bit shaggy and a little bit fuzzy, but I'm kind of liking it. I'm gonna put a drop of head cement on it, call this thing done, see how it works for chasing some of the largemouth bass around here. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.